Hey, I'm Chris. This is MMA for you. I'm going to be doing my post fight analysis for UFC 192. Before we get into that, though, I'd like to plug my friends Nathan Wolf's website at www.wolfhaas.design. He's a graphic designer and he can help you with all of your graphic design needs. Uh, on to the card um, prelims. Great stuff. Lots of finishes. Um, you know, some spectacular finishes, prospects look really good and whatnot. Prelims, lots of fun. Uh, main event, fight of the year candidate. But the rest of the main card, save for Pena versus I, um, wasn't that great. There, a lot of fights honestly came across like glorified uh, sparring matches. Um, can't speak too well of some of the fights in the middle of the, the main card. Um, overall though, especially the undercard, man, that's, I mean, especially like the FS1 prelims and uh, UFC Fight Pass prelims, great stuff there. As far as my picks go, uh, I got nine out of 12. The only three I lost, or I missed, were um, Derek Lewis versus Victor Pesta, uh, Juliana Pena versus Jessica I, and Ryan Bader versus Rashad Evans. As far as bonuses go, Tumanov and Martins took home f uh, performance of the night, while Cormier versus Gustafson got fight of the night. Well, let's get started. Daniel Cormier defeated Alexander Gustafson by split decision. I know that there are those that um, picked Gus or thought that Gustafson won the fight, and I think it's fair. Uh, rounds were very close. Some of the jetting was a bit. Uh, bit unusual in the sense that I believe uh, Gustafson dropped Cormier in the third and he still and like some of the judges scorecards he still did not get the nod um, or get that round somewhat understandable though because if you judge that Cormier got the got the better offense maybe he can Kind of give that round to Cormier. I don't know, though. Um, like I said, fight of the year candidate primarily took in, took place in the stand-up as well. Uh, Cormier did get that nice takedown in the beginning. Uh, but for the most part, it was mainly standing. And Gustafson actually got takedowns on Cormier. Of course, Cormier just got back to his feet when he was taken down. Um... One of the most effective moves that Cormier utilized though, was the uppercut from this when he had a single single collar tie against Gustafson. Uh, he took the he did those very often and they were very effective. I also felt that like Cormier's offense looked better just because he was the one pushing forward a lot more, especially when he took the center of the octagon and just kept walking forward. Um, I think that this looks good in the eyes of the judges. There are times that Gustin would get hit, and he would actually literally run to uh, in order to reset. I just I think that probably hurt him. Once again, in the eyes of the judges. So, um, but nonetheless, I mean, he fought great. He was finding some really good knees. Um. Punches were good. There were some bouts of Gustafson just seemingly standing still. And Cormier would just kind of hit him. I don't know if he was tired or whatnot. But there were a couple bout, uh, parts of the bout where Gustafson was doing that. Otherwise, I mean, he, he did really great. I mean, it was just really back and forth. It was really hard. I mean, the only person who got a knockdown really was... Uh, Gustafson and Cormier, uh, both of them have really good chins. Um, good stuff here, just good stuff. Uh, it looks like John Jones is probably going to come back, so I'm going to guess that Cormier Jones is next. And Bader seems to even know that and will take another fight. Uh, however, as far as um, if Jones isn't available, then... It really should be Bader, who's coming off a five fight one streak, should be next against Cormier. And at the very least, that's a fresh matchup. 
with Gustafson, uh, there are guys like uh, Rashad Evans, OSP, or like the loser to share versus Cummins that he can get next. Next round, I thought Ryan Bader defeated Rashad Evans by unanimous decision. Um, good performance from Bader for sure. Very dominant. And I'll even go so far as to say that if this version of Bader fought Rashad, the best Rashad Evans, I don't even know if Rashad Evans would win. Like the best Rashad Evans would win. Um, I liked what I saw from Bader here. This was probably my most egregious pick, you know, in the sense of like, oh, why did I pick Evans? Like, I really should have picked Bader at this point. And I keep underestimating him far too much for my own good. <laughs> Um, but Bader, I really liked his sneaky uppercut. He threw kicks, and uh, he, he showed a really good jab here and good movement. Uh, I didn't feel that Evans was particularly slow. I did feel that his timing was off. However, even if his timing was on, it didn't look like he'd get past that jab. Um, I will say this with Bader. I'm, I keep underestimating the guy, but I still can't get myself to think that he'll be... Jones, Cormier, Anthony Rumble Johnson, or Gustafson. Anyone else, though, I am going to pick Bader from here on out. He can fight Pat Cummins. He can fight Glover Teixeira again. Um, he can fight Manawa. He can fight OSP again. I'm going to pick Bader. All right, from here on out, there's only, uh, as far as I can tell, Bader's number five. And that's it. Like, Everyone else cannot beat Vader. You know, <laughs> that that's just the way I see it right now with him. Um, and, and I really think he's really, he, he's probably hit his stride a while back. I just haven't been able to see it. Um, striking's looking real good. It's just looking solid. Um, he always has that really good wrestling. And that guy can just hit a power double like none other. Uh, he can grind if he wants to. He's big for the weight class. He's a good fighter, athletic guy. Um, as far as Bader goes, he really should be getting the next title shot against Cormier. However, um, other guys he can fight if he doesn't, Anthony Rumble Johnson or the winner of Cummins versus Teixeira. With uh, Evans, you can give him like Manawa, OSP. You know, I'd like he's getting older. I'd like to see him just have a fight with Shogun next. Shogun is coming off the win over uh, Nogueira, and I think they've been, they tried to put together Evans versus Shogun before. It just never happened. Um, but you know, I I think now is a better time than any. Evan both are getting older. They're so far away from title shots. And at this point, you just kind of want to put, like, name value and fun fights for someone like Rashad Evans at this point. Next fight of that, Ruslan Magomedov defeated Sean Jordan by unanimous decision. Tepid win, you know. I think the biggest problem with Magomedov is he just isn't heavy-handed. Uh, he moves very well. Um, throws in combination. He has a hell of a kick. Um, and Jordan looked kind of out of shape as well and Magomedov's takedown defense is solid as well uh, I don't think he sits on his punches I don't know if that's going to change anything but um, you know he's one of very few heavyweights that does Magomedov one of very few heavyweights who just does not have heavy hands um, at the same time in the UFC I honestly think that Magomedov might be the best heavyweight prospect under 30. There aren't many under 30 in heavyweight. Uh, so he does need to step up in competition. You can give him, I think the winner of Strew versus Rochelle will work. If you want to really give him a step up, the winner of Brown versus Mitrione would work as well. With Sean Jordan, back to the mid tier with him. You know, he can beat a good amount of the mid tier guys, lose to some mid tier guys. He's a good fighter. He's heavy-handed. He can wrestle and grapple a bit. But I don't think he just... I, I guess he just doesn't have a standout skill set. And he can be either in good shape or really out of shape. Next fight uh, after that, Joseph Benavides defeated Ali Bagayitunov by unanimous decision. I, I thought this was a glorified sparring match, to be honest with you. Um, 
A lot of the fight considered, consisted of Benavides throwing the right hand and getting out of the way, and Bagi Tunov just trying to counter. He wasn't really trying to push or initiate the offense a lot of times. Um, I mean, more happened, but it just... I, you know, I never got the feeling in this fight that any big change was going to happen in this fight or the fight was going to end at any point uh, at any point in the 15 minutes. Uh, there, wasn't too, there weren't too many ground exchanges as well. Um, you know, it's a good one for Benavides. Uh, Bagi Tunov's a really good fighter. Um, and I think uh, Benavides should get Dodson next. But I'm going to be honest with you. He's lost to Demetrius Johnson twice. I mean, he's going to either just knock off contenders or he's going to have to just keep fighting guys that have lost to Demetrius Johnson. So it's like, okay, give him Dodson, maybe Horiguchi. Um, who else? And, and really just whoever else at this point maybe he should move up to 135 because as long as Demetrius Johnson is champion Joseph Benavides is just going to be the number two guy there with Bagi Tunov you can give him like an Ian McCall John Moraga and Dustin Ortiz next <laughs> next right after that Juliana Pena defeated Jessica I by unanimous decision wasn't big on the um, point deduction uh, I didn't feel that Jessica I I don't know if she was even and she was in the bottom of side mount and she throws a knee to Pena's head. One, I don't think it caused a lot of damage. Two, I don't know if it was intentional. I mean yes it was against the rules. Three, they didn't even the ref didn't even put him back in the original position. He, he stood to fight. So it was really odd. Um uh, I'm just gonna be honest with you too. I'm just I'm not that high on Juliana Pena, you know, and that's not the reason why I didn't pick her to win. It's because she's not technically sound. She her punching mechanics are actually just all wrong. She flares out her elbow and then like, and punches. Um, even her takedown game is based more on just clinching and forcing the takedown than real technical merit. She's highly aggressive, got a lot of heart, athletic, and she does have some power. But, I mean, Jessica I even showed that you can out-clench Pena. She was out pinning her up against a cage and throwing knees and whatnot, out-striking her at times, and even got top position on her as well. Um, she needs a lot of work, which is kind of sad in the sense that in the UFC... Pena is probably the best ba women's bantamweight prospect in the UFC roster right now. She's young. She's still really raw, so she can get better. But it seems like a case of like she's getting away with being untechnical. And it's going to cost her some t somewhere down the line. It's just going to cost her. You can watch this fight and watch her fights ever since The Ultimate Fighter. Tell me what's different, you know? A lot of the same stuff. She's still throwing really sloppy strikes. She's still trying to force the takedown. She's trying to force a lot of things. It's working so far, but um, I, I definitely feel there's a limit. She, she definitely needs to fix her game on a fundamental level, you know? Mixing that aggression with fundamentals and she can be really good but I just I don't know what's going on like I, I just don't see the improvement you know with that said um she is bank she has beat a ranked opponent so she might get a top 10 fighter maybe a Kaufman Nunez or Zingano I would personally like to see Pena get like a Raquel Pennington um Someone not coming off a loss, though. Cause I would say Andrade, but she's coming off a loss to Pennington. Um, I know Kaufman fights Durandami, so I guess the winner of that would work. Um, I could go Misha Tate, Pena. Wouldn't it be the. I don't like that fight, personally. Jeez. Um, <laughs> 
who else is on the roster these days? You know? I mean, some of the... Wow. Like, Invicta, they have, like, Tanya Avenger, and they have some young fighters, too, like Irene Aldana, who I think has been, you know, I think is actually a little better than Pena, at least on a technical level. Um, stylistically, though, I can see Pena taking her down. Kelly McGill, Penny Kianzad. So there are some good prospects in Invicta. Um, that, man, they should probably sign and fight Pena. <laughs> oh, you know what would be a good one? Pena Carmouche. I think that would be a good one, actually. Good test for Pena. And um, could be seen as a step up, too, even. With Jessica I, you know, she's still a really good fighter. She She's lost two in a row now, but... Um, you know, she's, she's really good. And actually, she's doing a really improved game here. I actually liked more of what I saw from Jessica I here. Even off her back, you know. She's, like, was at times just more active off her back. Whereas Pena just seemed to want to hold her down. Uh, with I, though, I think she should fight, like, Betch Cohea or Marion Renault next. Okay, on to FS1 prelims, Yaya Rodriguez defeated Daniel Hooker by unanimous decision. Man, Yaya Rodriguez, man, total diamond in the rough. When I heard about Ultimate Fighter Latin America, I did not think much of this season. Uh, I, I was thinking that all of these guys would probably get bounced from the UFC, and uh, they'd be on their merry way, <laughs> to be honest with you. But, um, man, have... The majority of them just proved me wrong. And Yair Rodriguez, this guy has some top 10, if not top 5 potential. He's got some crazy kicks. And one thing about Yair Rodriguez that I like is that he has a traditional martial arts background in Taekwondo. And I say this with a lot of those uh, traditional martial artists that uh, go into MMA. A lot of them tend to be very accurate, whether you're thinking of like, and have good timing. Whether it's like Machida... Kung Lee, Stephen Thompson, and, and others. They're just very accurate and have good timing. And you saw that, you can see that in the, this fight with Rodriguez, he would like throw, sometimes he'd throw a counter punch and get out of the way and, and then connect. Even some of his like more unorthodox kicks connected. Like that, that front, uh, the one where he kind of does a front flip, <laughs> you know, that connected. Um, his ground game's really good. I like that he actually goes for leg locks in the sense that um, it's a good way to get to top position or even get back to your feet. And his takedown defense looks like it's improving. Uh, Rodriguez, he's only like 23, 24. I, I really like what I see from him. And, uh, you know, I like Daniel Hooker too. I think he is a solid fighter. He's pretty big for the weight class, he's six foot. And at 145 and 6 foot, that's uh, relatively tall. And he's just a solid fighter. He can strike in a while. He's got a good chin. And he can grapple a bit as well. And the Ayer Rodriguez beat him and looked good doing it too. Um, so, good win for Rodriguez and a good win for his development. You know, he, he beat a solid fighter, you know. Is he, Daniel Hooker a great fighter? No. Is he a good fighter? Yes, I will say that much. I think he is a good fighter. And um, these are the type of fights that prospects like Yair Rodriguez should win. And um, he did. And, you know, he has less than 10 fights. And he looks pretty good. He should probably get more featherweights around that level. Um, I'm trying to think who's there. Maybe like, like your Whitefords or like I know Whitefords fighting someone already though. Um, Hetis, you know. Um, rather not have them fight com guys coming off of losses, but just any like mid-level uh, featherweight that's coming off a win that's not a prospect, like a blue chip prospect. I think it would be a good appropriate fight for Rodriguez. With Hooker, just more lower to mid-tier guys in the division for him. Next fight after that, Albert Tumanov defeated Alan Joban by TKO in the first round. 
I, I am so high on Albert Tumanov, man. This guy, blue chip prospect, elite level striking. I'll say it right now. He throws in combination. His boxing's good. He hits hard. He's good defensively, and he's good at he can defend takedowns. Um, there are times where he catch Jovan's kick and throw him down with authority. I like Alan Jovan too. I think he is a fun action fighter, but defensively, he always needs work. Morley Alves, man, so knock him at, down in the first round. Matt Dwyer knocked him down in the first round. And a case like against Tumanov, he wasn't just dropped. He was put to sleep. In, not to sleep, but he was out in a weird position, too. When he got up and he trying to protest a stoppage, he's protesting as he's visibly loopy and can hardly stand on with his own power. I mean, um, I, there's a lot to like tune off. Joan's a good guy to beat too, you know? Um, cause he's real tough and to beat a guy like that in the first round, pretty good. Um, you have to be pretty good to do that. I think tune up should get a step up in competition and fight someone like a Neil Magny or someone else coming off a win. That's looking really good. Lorenz Larkin. Alan Joban, she got some fun action fighters. Give him Eric Silva. Give him uh, Santiago Ponzinibbio. Give him um, Ben Saunders. You know, give him just guys that will have fun fights for him. I think at this point, I hate to say it, I think he's kind of reached his his ceiling. Uh, it's at what I kind of expected of him uh, as a fun action fighter. I think at this point. It's kind of what he is. It's a fun action fighter. But hey, the UFC needs those type of guys. Um, he's a good fighter. None to, you know, don't get me wrong. That's not to say he's not a good fighter. He's a very, you know, he is a good fighter. But um, I think that's kind of where he is at this point. Next fight after that, Adriano Martins defeated Islam Makachev by knockout in the first round. I picked this correctly. Um, and it's kind of what I figured it would be. Islam Makachev, blue chip prospect, Sambo background, hits hard, chains things together while he goes from takedowns to ground grappling very well. Striking needs some work. He has that Sambo type of striking that you see from, even Fedor does it, but you see it from Habib Minerva Gomedov as well where they throw these looping casting punches they tend to be very accurate but also wild too and against a guy like Adriano Martins not gonna cut it he countered that thing like and knocked him out Adriano Martins is big for the weight class he can box well he has power he's a legit Brazilian Jiu Jitsu black belt and the only time he's lost in the last couple years was against Donald Cerrone. And, you know, it's just a case of Martin just has way too much experience. He's way more well-rounded. He's dangerous. Like this guy can finish guys, legit finish guys. Um, and he's pretty much at his prime. You know, he's really just hitting his stride now, and he's gonna collect. He'll probably collect more wins. I'll even say this right now. I think he's a little bit above the rank and file of lightweight and there's a lot of lightweights out there I think he's in he has a skill set of that top 11 to 15 maybe even top 10 you know number 10 number 9 um, as far as he should fight he should fight like the Bobby Greens the Ally Quintas maybe I mean, like an Evan Dunham he's kind of around that level if you want to give him a Ross Pearson, Ross Pearson's kind of like at the lower end of that level at this point. Um, but yeah, you know, I like what I see from Martins. I don't see him losing too much. Um, and he's huge for the weight class and definitely a guy that uh, I think at this point, you're going to see some pretty good performances from him for at least another year or two. Um, Islam Makachev, potential, lots of it. 
You know, it just... He went from Leo Kuntz. His first fight in the UFC is against Leo Kuntz. It's like, who's Leo Kuntz? Exactly, you know? To Adriano Martins, who has infinitely more experience. And it's just such a big step of, in competition. If he beat a guy like that, he would be like... You know, he'd be on that Chris Weidman, John Jones type of prospect. Um, or Habib, because Habib beat Glayson Tebow in his second fight in the UFC. He's just not there yet, and that's fine. He should fight more pe- fighters and, you know, lower tier, mid tier fighters of the division. Next fight off that, Rose Namunas defeated Angela Hill by rena- standing Rene Kachok in the first round. I liked what I saw from Nami Innes here. I'm glad to see her not just go in there and like throw uh, it's like some crazy sidekick to the face or something, you know, or some jumping move even right off the bat. She showed a jab. She showed some actual boxing there. I felt that she was winning the range game against Angela Hill. Um, on the ground, she had a really nice takedown, you know, it's a real nice takedown, took the back, I remember watching her fight against Emily Kagan back in uh, Invicta. Choked her outstanding. Outstanding. <laughs> but he, she did get the rear naked choke on her whilst, you know, the opponent was standing. I know Nami Innes is good at that. You know, um, she's good at taking the back and getting the choke. Um, really liked what I saw from her here. Like I said, um... You know, with Pena, I don't see the fundamental aspect of the game being worked on with her. Or, like, she doesn't show it in the cage, at least. At least here, you kind of got to see it with Nami Yunus. Uh I think Nami Yunus should get, uh, like, a Ronda Marcos next. Uh, win- maybe even the winner of Van Zandt versus Calderwood. Um, maybe even Watterson. I forgot who Water Waterson's fighting someone next. I totally forgot who it is. Um, or maybe even the winner of Daly versus Almeida next. I will say this about Nama Yunus though. I'm not big on her ranking. She's number four. And I just don't feel that she has the resume to really, um, and the wins in that resume to validate um, her being so highly ranked. It seems like she's ranked... I mean, she has the wins in the Ultimate Fighter, which were good. But um, as far as, like, yeah, I'm not talking about Ultimate Fighter wins. I'm talking about, like, you know, three-minute rounds or three rounds, three five-minute rounds, you know, fights. You know, real MMA-sanctioned bouts, not exhibition bouts. Um, Other than that, She's only in her early 20s. She's a good athlete. Already really slick on the ground. And if she's working on her fundamentals, I like it. As far as Angela Hill goes, um, you know what? She came into the UFC, beat up Emily Kagan. Then she gets Tisha Torres. And then after that, she gets Rose Namajunas. I mean... She's not going to win those. She's too raw. She doesn't even punch. Like She still needs to work on her punching mechanics. Some of her punches look sloppy. But she's really good in that uh, the plum and getting those knees in. She does need to work on her grappling. It seems like her guard seems a bit easy to pass. Um, but there's potential with her. She's a good athlete. Um, she's still in her late 20s, if I'm not mistaken. So she can improve. You know, it's just like she's like what two, three and one, three and two or something like that. I mean, she doesn't even have like seven fights. You know, she shouldn't be fighting this level of competition at this point. Should be fighting like a Heather Joe Clark, um, Eric Almeida would actually work. Um, Beck Rawlings, you know, Angela Magana. You know, she should be fighting those. Uh, that level of competition. You know, Rhodes Amianis, Tisha Torres, that's a really high level of competition. And, you know, I think Angela Hill's got something. I, I really do. I think once she becomes, she puts it all together, she gets her striking better, gets her ground and takedown defense better. I really think that she can, uh, 
I don't know what her, her ceiling is. I don't think we've seen it yet, though, you know, but definitely, you know, top 15 potential for sure. Um, Numbiness has, in my opinion, much higher potential. Uh, t title challenger for sure. So, um, I'm interested to see where both of them go next. As far as prospects go, we're going to go with the... UFC fight pass prelims here as Sage Northcutt defeated Francisco Trevino by TKO. The only things I'll say about Trevino is that he missed weight, he pushed the ref, and uh, really he doesn't have much use in the UFC. He's not a gatekeeper. He's not really a fun action fighter. He's not much of a prospect. He's not really a prospect, you know. I can see him get cut from the UFC after this fight. Um... Sage Northcutt, sky's the limit for him. I mean, really, this guy, he's got to be seen as the next big thing. Um, he has been, he is gifted. I mean, really, next level athleticism. He's been doing karate since who knows how long. Um, he has the look. I mean, that, that guy's an eight pack, you know? <laughs> I mean, it's crazy just how sculpted this guy is. He looks like a friggin' comic book character, honestly. Um, next level athleticism, real physical, too. I mean, he got that takedown, those elbows, and that takedown with authority. Um, I can actually see him moving up to welterweight at one, some point if he keeps growing, which I think he will be. Um, sky's the limit for him, but he needs experience because, yeah, this is a great win. Trevino, though, is on the very low end of the division. And if you actually look at his resume, he still hasn't... He's beating guys he's expected to beat. Uh, guys that, quite honestly, could be considered cans or scrubs or something like that, you know. Um, just very low-level fighters. He just needs experience. He, he should, in lightweight, there's a lot of low-level fighters, you know, that he can fight. Um, give him those. You know, just give him more Francisco Trevinos uh, that are out there, you know. Um, I hope they build him up very slowly. But, yeah, I can see him be the next big thing. Um... I can see him getting a good fan base. I can see him get a lot of haters, too, to be honest with you. But, uh, yeah, just build the get, build him up slowly. Next fight with that, Sergio Pettis defeated Chris Carey also by NMS decision. Man, the first two rounds for Pettis here, he looked elite. But it's that third round, and it's something about Sergio Pettis where he can be up ahead, but he can lose. You know, that's always a fear of him, you know, for him, you know. Ryan Benoit, he's winning, gets knocked out. Alex Caceres, I thought that he was winning until he got choked out. And while he didn't, he still ended up with the win here. He did lose the third round pretty definitively, you know. After winning, you know, like, I don't know what it is. And I hope it's not the habit that I think it is, that he, he'll... He'll win until he loses type of thing, you know. Um, his striking's good. He dropped Carriasso. He'd grab his leg, take him down, actively pass to guard, or actively, yeah, actively pass guard. There's a lot to like about Sergio Pettis, you know. He beat a ranked opponent in Chris Carriasso here. So I'm kind of curious to see where the UFC takes him from, from here on out because, um, I really think that Sergio Pettis should be, should be fighting more of the mid-level guys. You know, I mean, could he beat Ryan Benoit again? Uh, like, if they fought again, could he beat him? I, I'd like to find out. Even though Chris Carey also is higher ranked, and I'm still very curious to see if Pettis can beat those, like, mid-level, you know, that, like, firmly established mid-level, lower-level guys. His skills, uh, when he's on, he looks great. I mean, he's he's pretty accurate. He actually hits relatively hard. Um, I just I like what I see from him, you know. And um, 
You know, if you need to get him some higher up fighters, you know, you can maybe get him like an Ortiz or a Moraga or something like that. Um, I'd like to see him just get more. You know, like the winner of Patty Hullahan versus Louis Smolka, something like someone, someone around that level. You know, I think that'd be good for him. I mean, Kerry also can get like the loser of that fight because he's on a three-fight losing streak now. But it was still like Mighty Mouse, then Cejudo, then Pettis. So he needs a step down in competition. Bad. He's only lost to the best guys, you know, or like top prospects. So. Yeah, that's the thing. With beating Kiraos was a really good win. And finally, Derek Lewis defeated Victor Pesso by TKO in the third round. Um, you know, Victor Pesso was playing with fire here in a sense that, like, he was not winning. He was not fighting to finish. He was fighting to grind down Derek Lewis against the cage, trying to take him down and whatnot. But um, I never got the impression he was actually fighting to finish. And against, like, Derek Lewis... I remember the Jared Rochel fight back in the regionals. He can keep his power in the later rounds. You know? Um, you know, it is a bit concerning with Lewis that he did get taken down as much as he did. But I do feel that he is actively working and it kind of shows on um, on his flaws. You know, he, he's a little more patient. He was in the bottom of side mount. He just, like, you know, man, just get back to his feet the right way, for example. Um, there's a lot to, you know, Derek Lewis is a fun fighter, and he has massive power, standing and especially and his ground and pound as well. He had that really fun, and he has some of the best post fight interviews too. He had that really funny comment about his cardio. So, you know, these guys, they're prospects in the division and heavyweight. They're not like blue chippers by any means, but um, you know, they're good fighters. So they should get more lower to mid-tier guys of the division. So that's it for my post-fight analysis for UFC 192. If you have any comments, just leave them below. And that's it for MMA for you. Thank you guys very much.